Assalamu alaikum. In today's lecture, we shall derive uh, the expression for voltage generated in real DC machines and torques which are generated in real DC machines. Uh, we have discussed in details the expression for uh, generated voltage in a single loop rotating in a uh, magnetic field generated by curved pole faces. We learned that the induced voltage was given by this expression 2 over pi phi into omega. That is the voltage induced in the, uh, this coil that depends upon the flux in the machine and the speed of the rotation in the machine and it uh, there is a constant uh, so we shall see that in real DC machines, the same is the situation, the voltage that is generated in the real machine that also depends upon the flux, total flux in the machine, the speed of the rotation of the rotor and that will depend upon a constant uh, which uh, uh, is determined by the type of the construction of the machine. In real DC machines, we do not have a single coil with single turn over here, rather we have multiple turns. Uh, multiple coils with multiple turns in each coil. So uh, the total number of conductors that are there in the rotor of a real DC machine denoted by Z that is equal to number of coils in the in the, uh, the machine multiplied by number of turns uh, that are there in each coil multiplied by 2. That is there are two sides of uh, a single turn in which voltage is induced that is this third side and this side so two conductors in uh, one turn of the coil uh, and we also know that uh, uh, there are diff in real DC machines there are different ways to connect these coils to the commutator segments uh, and that determines the number of parallel paths for the current to flow in the machine in the case of lab winding, we know that the total number of parallel paths uh, for the current to flow in a DC machine that is equal to the number of poles. That is, A, uh, that is number of parallel paths is equal to the number of poles in the machine. This is the case for simplex lab wound DC machine. And if we have a duplex lab wound DC machine, then the number of parallel paths here is the number of parallel paths for current. So in the case of uh, duplex uh, lab wound DC machine, the number of parallel paths will be 2 multiplied by the number of poles and in general uh, which is m multiplied by the number of parallel paths, uh, m multiplied by the number of poles in the machine where m is the plex of winding. Uh, for duplex winding, M is 2. For triplex uh, winding, M is equal to 3. In case of wavewound DC machines, we remember that for simplex wavewound DC machines, the number of parallel paths for current is always equal to 2. And uh, for duplex uh, and similarly for mplex uh, winding, the number of parallel paths for current is 2 multiplied by m. So there are z conductors in the DC machine, in real DC machine, uh, in which voltage is being induced, and there are a parallel paths. So total number of conductors in each parallel path that is z divided by a. Total number of conductors divided by number of parallel paths. So in each parallel path there are Z divided by A conductors. So Z divided by A conductors in each parallel path. And in, in each conductor, a voltage V, V, L is being induced. So the total voltage that is generated in the armature uh, or the rotor of a DC machine that is equal to Z divided by A multiplied by V, V, L. We are Z is the total number of conductors and A is the number of parallel paths and we remember that this number of parallel paths depends upon the type of the winding whether it is lap wound DC machine or wave wound DC machine and also upon the number of holes in the machine. 
So let's uh, rewrite uh, this expression in a way which is uh, generally more convenient. We know that this uh, V is the linear velocity of this conductor. This linear velocity is related with the angular velocity by this expression V is equal to R omega. So if we just substitute this expression over here, V A is equal to Z over A R omega B into L. We also know the uh, area, surface area of this rotor, uh, that is, uh, we have this cylindrical rotor and this area, area uh, of this uh, rotor, that is equal to this length, which is 2 pi r multiplied by this, uh, this length, L. 2 pi r L is this area and area per pole area per pole if there are p poles then area per pole is divided by p and we also know that flux is equal to flux density multiplied by the area which is perpendicular to this flux density so area per pole flux is equal to v multiplied by ap so uh, where AP is area uh, perpendicular to the flux lines, which in this case uh, is the uh, area of uh, this rotor, per pole area of this rotor. So that is, uh, this is equal to B multiplied by 2 pi R L over P. So let's uh, substitute it over here. Here we have Z over A. Uh, and then I multiply it by 2 pi uh, and then also divide it by 2 pi r is already there and omega uh, and uh, b l uh, I also divide it by p and multiply it by p so this 2 pi 2, 2 pi multiplied by r multiplied by l multiplied by uh, b divided by uh, this p that is equal to the total flux in the machine that is e a is equal to z p over a uh, multiplied by 2 pi and then flux this uh, expression into omega so once uh, the machine is designed, the number of uh, conductors in the machine, number of poles in the machine and uh, the number of parallel paths that is fixed. So this whole quantity is fixed and therefore EA is equal to K into phi into omega. So this expression is quite similar to the one that we have derived for a single turn of wire rotating in a magnetic field of curved pole faces. That is, the generated voltage depends upon the total flux in the machine, the speed of the rotation of the uh, rotor and a constant, this constant K uh, depends upon the construction of the machine. Where this uh, speed omega is uh, in radians per second, sometimes it is convenient, uh, or rather it is convention to represent the speed in RPM. So we know that the speed uh, in RPM, uh, if we here omega is uh, the speed in uh, radians per second, this is related with the speed in RPM. So if uh, this is speed in revolutions per minute, so if I divide it by 60, then I have uh, revolutions per second and if I multiply it by 2 pi then I have uh, radians per second so omega uh, omega which is in radian per second is related to uh, n which is uh, revolutions per minute speed in revolution per minute these are related by this expression so if, if uh, I write the same expression EA in terms of this newly defined uh, variable uh, here from here we see that n is equal to 60 over 2 pi into omega zp over 2 pi into a phi 
omega. So I multiply it by 60 and then divide it by 60. Uh, so this uh, omega multiplied by 60 divided by 2 pi that is n. So zp over 60 multiplied by a pi into n is the generated voltage where n is in revolutions per minute. So again this is another constant so let's write it k dash k dash phi into n. Uh, next uh, we derive uh, the expression for induced torque in real uh, DC machines. So we know that uh, induced torque uh, that is equal to R cross F induced and uh, we know that from our discussion on this simple machine we know that the torque was induced due to only these uh, two sides of the coil and in that case R was always perpendicular to induced force therefore R uh, cross F was simply equal to R F induced and uh, now there are Z conductors in real machine not only two conductors rather Z conductors so total torque that is uh, induced in real DC machine uh, that is equal to number of conductors total conductors in uh, due to which uh, the torque is induced multiplied by uh, R into F induced F induced we already know is this uh, I L B where I is current in each conductor so let's write it I conductor so R I conductor L B that is the total torque that is induced in a real DC machine this is the case when we have only uh, one conductor now there are Z conductors uh, what is uh, current in each conductor if I A is the total armature current uh, then current in each conductor what is that there are A parallel paths in the machine and the number of parallel paths depends upon the type of the winding that is whether it is lap wound DC machine or wave wound DC machine so current in each conductor is equal to total current divided by number of parallel paths so therefore torque induced is equal to Z uh, over A I A into uh, I A into R L B now by similar manipulations as we did earlier that is by defining flux equal to flux density multiplied by area per pole uh, area per pole uh, we know is that uh, is equal to 2 pi r l divided by number of poles so b multiplied by 2 pi r l over p is the total flux in the machine so i multiply it by uh, 2 pi divided by 2 pi so 2 pi uh, multiplied by b multiplied by r multiplied by l is the flux in the machine and therefore total torque induced in the DC machine is Z over A uh, multiplied by 2 pi into IA phi multiplied by IA and uh, here P uh, also divided by P and then multiplied it by P so multiplied by that is uh, the induced torque depends upon total flux in the machine, total current in the machine and it depends upon a constant uh, which uh, depends upon the construction of the machine. So induced torque in real DC machine is given by this expression. Remember that in the derivation of this expression and also in the derivation of expression for generated voltage uh, we have uh, made one assumption the assumption was that 
the voltage is induced in all the conductors. However, the real situation is slightly different. For example, we have uh, so real situation is slightly different. Uh, in real case, not all the conductors are under pole phases and uh, uh, not uh, voltage is not induced in all the conductors. So in uh, these calculations here in calculation of Z, we can exclude the conductors in which uh, no voltage is being induced. For example, in this case, these poles, these conductors, these coils are Bijan pole phases, uh, and no voltage is induced in these conductors. And therefore, in all these calculations, you can uh, refine these calculations by uh, selecting the correct number of conductors in which voltage is being induced. We have covered almost uh, all the basics uh, of uh, working of uh, DC machines. In the next lecture, we shall talk about uh, some more uh, things that is the losses in DC machines and powerful diagrams.